Hello, I'm Alina Haba, or as I've been called in the press lately, purse poodle and screech weasel. Holy shit, those are good. Suffice to say, I am not too happy with these new monikers, as you can probably tell by my face. Are you kidding? Screech weasel is a classic. That being said, being branded with these highly appropriate nicknames does not dissuade me from my God-given mission to do everything in my power to ensure the re-election of Donald J. Trump. I knew I liked you for a reason. Uh, I mean, you know, in addition to your Melania 2.0 good looks and incredibly perky sweater puppies. And to that end, I am here today in an attempt to procure what President Trump needs most. Money. Bank. Cash. Bread. Greenbacks. Bacon. Dead presidents. Brass. Dollar bills, y'all. Yes, folks, things are looking a tad grim, I must say, as our fearless leader has officially run out of time because due as of this Monday, just three days from now, the president needs to come up with 464 million smackaroos to make bond. I'm totally fucked. And that's 464 million that he just does not have. Which is like so weird because I'm like a billionaire and stuff. There is still a small shred of hope that Vladdy Daddy may pull out the checkbook. Come on, Pootie, do your boy a solid, bro. But barring that Russian spring miracle, all may be lost. I do not like where this is going. Unless we can sell. And I'm talking right now. 154,666 of these all talking, all dancing Trump bobbleheads, now at the low, low price of 44 easy payments of 69.95. Did I mention I was totally fucked? Hey folks, it's me, Bobo. Sorry to interrupt the show, but I know most of you are here to see me anyway, right? LOL. I just wanted to remind you that this channel is 90% fan funded. And in the case of this episode, 100% fan funded. You see, Scared Ketchup doesn't like to worry about the music tracks he picks, like later in the show when he makes Simon and Garfunkel sing Baby Got Back to the tune of Sounds of Silence. I like big butts, I cannot lie. You are the brothers can't deny. Using the desired music often means that all the YouTube ad revenue goes to the song's copyright holder, even if it's a parody. So if you like this kind of thing and you want more, please consider being part of the 1% of viewers who toss the ketchup man a little lettuce to his PayPal. PayPal is the best way to give because they take the lowest percentage. Buy Me A Coffee works too, and you can always use that YouTube super thanks button or pick up a little merch at his Etsy store. All the links are in the video description. Long story short, you are the reason this channel is growing at the rate it is, and you are the reason Scared Ketchup will soon be rolling out multiple videos every week. Thank you for supporting independent media, and if that didn't sell you, maybe this will. And if you follow the main media tomorrow, but if the offer shun, you might as well be walking on the sun. You might as well be walking on the sun. Hello, I'm 80s teen heartthrob Kurt Cameron. And I'm Kirk's wife, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Now come off it, Marge. Do not go there. You are not my wife and you know it. A girl can dream, can't she? Of course, but your stalker-like behavior distracts from the mission that God has put forth for us today. You know, Kirk, I can remember when I had your Tiger Beat poster on the ceiling above my bed so I could stare into your baby blues while I paddled the pink canoe. In Jesus' name, Marge, you know I can't unsee that image, right? Then mission accomplished. Okay then, let's get down to why we are here today. Yeah, Kirk Cameron, first things first. What in the hell happened to you, man? You look different. What are you talking about? Different how? I don't know, just different. Like the old teen heart throb magic is gone and it's been replaced by a weird, through the looking glass, anorexic Steve Bannon kind of look. You feel me? No, Marge, I do not feel you. Everybody ages and frankly, I've been through a lot. You have been through a lot, like walking to the mailbox every morning for the last 40 years to grab a stack of those family ties residual checks. Yeah, that does sound hard. Growing pains. Growing pains are what made you look like a couple miles of bad road. No, Growing Pains was the TV program I was on in the 80s. Oh, right. You mean the show that launched the careers of Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt? Yes, both Brad and Leo had small parts on the show. Let me see if I got this straight. Pitt and DiCaprio had bit parts on Growing Pains, and you were the lead actor. Leo and Brad went on to become two of the biggest stars in the world, and you're here crowdfunding for a puppet show? Did you tell him yet, Mr. Kirk? Did you tell him? Okay, Ziggy, chill out there, fella. I am gonna tell them, 
but I don't need you humping my leg, touching my junk, or farting for at least the next five minutes. Do you read me? I read you, Mr. Kirk. I read you loud and clear. I won't touch your balls or hump your leg, but I can't promise I won't fart a little. I mean, come on. It's written into my character for fuck's sake. Ziggy, now what did we say about using the F word? Oh, that's right. I forgot, Miss Green. No using the F word under any fucking circumstances. That's right, Ziggy. So if you use the F word again, you will have to spend the night in the box of solitude. No, 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 no! Not the box of solitude for fa, for fa, fa, for fa, 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 fa! You mean for fuck's sake, right? Hey, Miss Green just said fuck! Why doesn't she have to spend the night in the box of solitude? Ziggy, do you realize that you just said fuck again? So did you! You said it just now! Oh, fuck off, fuck face. Don't try to make this about me. You're the one going in the box. Ha, hell no! Just try putting me in the solitude box. I'll cut you, bitch. Ziggy, that's enough. No one is cutting anyone. Just stop saying fuck every other word so we can move the fuck on. Am I clear? Clear as a fucking bell. Everyone knows that TV shows today suck major donkey balls. Ain't that the truth? It has hit the point where there are now over 250,000 LGBTQ characters in children's television shows. Holy shit cakes. Recently, Coco Melon Lane featured two men doing squat thrusts in the cucumber patch. Now that sounds fun. The movie Lightyear had a couple of lezzies swapping spit. And even blue Blue's Clues had a cartoon pride parade where all the gay characters were happy, loving, and well-adjusted. That's definitely the work of Satan right there. Long story short, TV shows today are turning our kids into a bunch of little homos. And that's where we come in, right, Mr. Kirk? That's right. Our new show, The Adventures of Ziggy Fart Dust and Mr. Kirk, will be good old-fashioned fun, just like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, but with only about half the anti-vax garbage and kooky conspiracy theories. Only half you say? That's like, uh, still gonna be a lot. Wait, wait, what? Who is the fat rando giving handsies to invisible wieners? Yeah, forehead, we did not sign up for this. That's right, Mavis. We signed up for boobies. Bring back the boobies. Bring back the boobies. Bring, Bring back, back the, the boobies. boobies. <laughs> hey folks, it's me, your favorite prehistoric caveman. And me, his sexy, strong, yet appropriately submissive cavewoman wife. Yeah, so, uh, like, what the hell's going on here, Bobo? How do you mean? I mean, we've been in a lot of kooky get-ups before, like in episode 40 when we were St. Patty's Day leprechauns. And in the smash hit viral episode 38 when we looked like rejects from Gilligan's Island. Right, right, right. And in the most popular Trump show of all time, episode 37, when we looked like we were part of some wacky fever dream circus show. Okay, I get it. Our look is always changing. So what's your point? I guess I'm just wondering what does it all mean? And what's the purpose of this new look? I just don't get it. It's simple, Big Daddy. You need money, right? Well, yes, I do. In fact, if I had to pick a unit of measurement to explain how much money I currently need, I'd have to say a fuck ton. Right, and that's why I signed us up to star in this new movie from the makers of MAGA Man, Marvel Studios. Marvel Studios, you say? The multi-billion dollar conglomerate owned by the Disney Corporation? No silly, not Marvel Studios. Marvel Studios, the small podunk independent operation run by Dick and Jughead Marvel, two incel MAGA losers who live in the pump shed of their grandparents' koi pond. Oh, right those two idiots. Hey guys, Jughead and I are like, uh, absolutely thrilled that you've signed on to star in our new, like, uh, total reimagining of the whole Flintstones universe. Yeah, like, uh, it's gonna be freaking action-packed and sexy fantastic, man. Like, seriously, good, good, good. Um, yeah, okay, so what exactly is the premise of this movie? Premise? Yeah. Like, what, like, uh, is premise? Come on, guys, like, everyone knows what a premise is. Yeah, like, uh, of course, we, uh, know what that is, but, um, like, could you give us your, like, uh, definition? Just so we know we're, like, uh, on the same, like, page. Of course, premise is, uh, it's like the thing that, uh, it has to do with the, uh, stuff that revolves around the, maybe you should tell him, Big Daddy. Jesus, what's the damn movie about, for fuck's sake? Oh, right, that premise, yeah, so, like, uh, the film takes place in, like, uh, the olden times, like, obviously, and, uh, Fred Flintstone and his, like, uh, wife, Wilma, have been totally kidnapped by local drug dealers, and it's, like, uh, like, up to the local badass pimp, Barney Rubble, and his main bitch, uh, like, Betty, to, you know, save the day. OMG, I love it. Wait, wait, what? So I'm playing Barney Rubble the pimp? Right. 
Like, uh, exactly. The movie is called Bedrock, right? And the Barney character is the shit for reals. Total macho strongman, big balls. He, like, uh, even has his own, like, uh, theme music. So, like, uh, whenever he, um, like, appears on screen, like, we hear this, like, uh, smash hit tune by the Cave Dwellers. Smooth like butter, like a criminal undercover. Home, pop, like trouble, breaking into your heart like that. Ooh. Cool shit stunner, yeah, oh, it all to my mother. Hot like summer, yeah, I'm making you smell like that. Break it down. In my neighborhood, RFK is, uh, like the president, and Alex Jones drives the, uh, ice cream truck. Uh, so I'm sure you've all heard on the news that I am suing ABC's George Stephanopoulos, who has once again put his adorably tiny foot in his mouth by defaming me and calling me the R word in the interview he conducted with Congresswoman Nancy Mace. That's the little fucker who looks like Wee Man from Jackass in a Ted Koppel wig, right? That's him. I'm right with you on this one, Big D. Everyone knows you never touched that old broad because she's not your type, even though you did mistake her in a photo for your ex-wife, Marla. Yeah, well, she wasn't my type either. Good one. Since all of my qualified attorneys are tied up handling the buttload of indictments and civil cases I have going on, I have retained the services of America First Legal, the quote-unquote law group headed up by my trusted senior advisor and top-notch unlicensed criminal attorney, Mr. Broadway, Stephen Miller. It's a thank you. Thank you so much for having me on once again, sir. Before we get started, Mr. Trump, and let me just say that, as you know, Nancy Mace was completely humiliated in that interview. And, and take it from me, there is always a high price to pay for humiliation, which is usually around two grand to be with a succulent seductress who's a looker like Nancy. Can you stop jacking off and just get on with this? I agree with Bobo, but that is the right price. I know it is. It's cost me a fortune. Uh, all right, I, now, now, now what your beautiful concubine there said is the truth. If you would have been a raper, you would have had to have inserted your, your mushroom-headed uh, thingy in, in between her marinated meat curtains. And you didn't do that, right? I did not. Okay, so you only being a diddler and a bit of a finger popper you should never, ever be referred to as a rapist because rape is not a Johnsonless act. And that's why you would get the big bucks if I ever paid you. Yep, Skeevy Steve really knows his shit. Well, thank you, Bozo. I appreciate that. That's Bobo, you geeky fuck. Of course it is, and, and I apologize. I, I just can't believe this man Snuffleupagus. He is clearly trying to malign your stellar, dare I say, almost angelic reputation as nothing more than a sexual abuser. I mean, come on, that was proven in court. Am I right? You absolutely are. I was found liable on what they were calling sexual assault, but never liable or guilty of rape. Exactly. I, I, I mean, this is a clear-cut case of the heartless and slanderous besmirchment of an honest, law-abiding serial predator, if I've ever seen one. I couldn't agree with you more, and I can't wait to take down this lying son of a bitch and his low-rated television network. That's right. Big Daddy's gonna take you for everything you're worth, you Greek bitch. You way too hairy women haven't always own in shitty diners for some goddamn reason, motherfucker. Wow, she is something else. She absolutely is, but we are out of time and we have to get going. Thank you so much for joining us. It, it was my pleasure. Uh, but, but just a second. Uh, before we wrap things up here, uh, 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 sweetheart, is there any way that you and I uh, could maybe get together later for a drink and, and I could show you uh, how much I truly appreciate your unwavering knockers? I, I, I mean, support. Uh, please go fuck off. Oh, Jesus. I love it when you talk like that. In my neighborhood, no one like wears a mask or like uh, gets vaccinated. My superpower is being honest. I'll eat your ass. I will. I like big butts. I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. When a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. Cause you notice that what was stuffed You pull up tough Deep in the jeans she's wearing What you gonna do with all that junk All that junk inside that trunk I'm a 
Get, get, get you love, get you love.